Hey guys, Commander Exorcist here. We're back in Space Engineers for another tutorial. This one is building off of my previous Simple Tram tutorial, and today I'm going to show you how to take that Simple Tram build and make it automated. So we're going to build a simple A to B transit system on a straight track. And so that is going to be using the remote control and two timers. So I hope that you'll stick with me and watch as we turn this simple train into a fully functioning transit system. But before we get started, if you enjoy the content I create on this channel, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and make sure notifications are turned on so that you don't miss any of my Space Engineers content. You'll find links in the description for Discord, Patreon, merch, and more. Okay, so we're going to be making a basic point-to-point -point tram system. See, there's our little train ready to go. And so to do that, you need three blocks. You need the remote control. We're going to be using it for its autopilot function. And then you need one timer block for each of your waypoints. So in this case, we're doing two waypoints. So we've got two timer blocks. I got a straight stretch of track here and a simple tram design that we're going to be working with in this video. And so there we go. And so before we get started, just kind of putting together the automation, uh, a couple of things that I want to go over just kind of as a setup. Um, this tram build is covered in my previous tutorial where I did the simple tram design and uh, simple track designs with the curved tracks. But one of the things that you want to be aware of is your propulsion override. And so propulsion override is what we're going to be using to guide our train up and down the track. And so you want to make sure that you're aware of where your train moves in relation to that. So negative numbers move my train in this direction. Positive numbers move my train in this direction. And so you want to make sure that when you're building your train that you're fully aware of how your propulsion override numbers actually move the train because that's how it works. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. And the first thing that we want to do is we're going to take our engineer and we want to get right up close to our remote control. And we're going to open up our GPS system and we're going to create a new GPS coordinate. And I like to call them PSNs. So this is Tram PSN01, which is essentially the starting position for this setup. Now you can fly down here and eyeball it if you want to try to risk it. Or in my case, since I'm doing a tutorial, I want to be a little more cautious, so we're going to hop in the really cool suspended uh, seat here, and we're going to move the train. So um, I also like this because it allows you to, one more time before setting it to automated settings, move your train to a different part of the track and ensure that it's stable, that it's actually working, and that the track's not going to fall apart. It's just really like one final operational test. You don't need to go all the way down. Um, you really want to go to the approximate location of where you want your train to stop. So in this case, we're going to stop here. Freaking love those suspended uh, seats, by the way. And so uh, we're going to come up here and we're going to do the exact same thing that we did down on the other side. So we're going to take our engineer and we kind of want to just, you know, lean up against the remote controller. We're going to create a new waypoint and we're going to call this one Tram PSN02. Oops. And this is essentially our return location. So we've got Tram PSN01 and PSN02. That's A. And then there's B down here or start down at the other end. And I call this the return. So when I build my tram systems, there's a start position and there's a return position. You're going to see in a moment why I call them that. And so the next thing you want to do is you want to come over to your train and any you know control panel on the grid you can use. You just want to be able to activate the grid. And we're going to go in here and we're going to set up a few things. The first thing I like to do is rename the first timer to timer start because it's going to control the first waypoint. And then we'll have a timer return, which will control the second waypoint. Now you don't need to change anything else with the timers at the moment. We're going to go up to the remote control and you want to leave all of the settings alone at the moment. Uh, we cannot, we don't really want to change anything because they are, you know, good as they are. Except you want to select both of the GPS locations and turn them into waypoints. And these are going to control the brakes on our train. Before we touch those though, we want to go up here and turn on the autopilot because if you don't turn on the autopilot, which is a critical step, your train will can simply pass through the waypoint, collide with the superstructure, and destroy itself. I've, um, yeah, that has happened so many times. Um, so we're going to set up our first location, 
And so whenever you build a train, you need to separate your wheels by groups. And so with my builds, I usually do an L wheel, right wheel, and then I have an A wheel for obviously all wheels. And so with the location, with the GPS locations, those locations are going to reset your propulsion override. They are your braking locations. So we're gonna go down and you wanna reset on the wheels, the propulsion override. Then you wanna go to the remote control and set the parking brake. Do not set the parking brake on the wheels themselves. Let the remote controller take care of the braking. So you wanna focus specifically for brakes on the remote control, okay? And so once that is done, you're gonna come over here and we're actually going to start one of the timers. We're gonna start the first timer, which is timer start PSN01, because we're setting up that waypoint that is way down the track on the other side. So now it will set your propulsion override to zero, it'll set the parking brake, and then it activates the timer, which will essentially flip those operations and send the train on down the track. Setting up PSN02, which is the return group, is pretty much the exact same thing. You're going to reset your propulsion override. You're going to go to your remote control. You're going to set the parking brake. Only this time, we're going to start the return timer, which is going to do pretty much the exact same thing, just sending the train in a different direction. So now we've got three actions for each one of the waypoints. This is a great system to use, by the way. You can use it to open doors, set lights, turn on sirens, all kinds of cool stuff. So um, I really like the waypoint setup here, but this is what we've got. So it'll, it'll reset propulsion override on all the wheels, set the parking brake, and start the timer starter. So now we're gonna go to our first timer. This is the timer down at the, currently down at the far end of the track. It's our start timer. We are going to set the propulsion override on the A wheels group. So this is where, where the uh, waypoints, where the brakes, this is the power. So I know that negative numbers brings my train toward my return location. So we're gonna make that negative 100. I'm gonna go back here. We're gonna turn off the parking brake and that should be all you need to do, okay? And we're gonna do the exact same thing with the return timer. So we're gonna go up here and instead of a negative number, I need it to come the opposite direction. So we're gonna make it 100, confirm, and then we're gonna release the parking brake. And that is all that is necessary to build a basic point-to-point -point tram system. And though to activate it, we just come over here. We are at the return location. We're just gonna start the return timer. And there she is, starting to flash. We'll give it a moment. And if everything is done appropriately and you've turned on your autopilot and the timers are set, there she goes. So. Um, there's our position, and now the train will move down here to tram PSN01, which is the timer start position. And if everything is done correctly, it should come to a halt. Perfect. And now you can see that is the return timer that is flashing, it's counting down, giving you a few seconds to kind of load your passengers onto the uh, tram. And now it has reversed the propulsion override and it will make its way down to the end at PSN 02. and a successful stop. You can see the timer is starting to count down again and she makes her way to the next location. And so this is a timer loop and as long as you don't mess with it and I mean turn it off, turn it on or unless there's an obstruction of some kind, this design will run forever. And so it will constantly go back and forth um, you can adjust the speed, so there are speed controls and a couple of other things in my other tutorials if you want to see how to build this particular tram setup. This is a very basic setup, so you can hide the timers, and uh, I sometimes will hide them in the floor. Um, you can come up with different designs. You could have multiple cars cook connected together, whatever your imagination you know, cooks up. But this is just kind of the basic setup, so you can see here 
gets to the location, it breaks, and then the timer engages, and it switches it, pushes it on down to the next part of the track, and it will go on forever. All right, everybody. Hey, there will be a link in the description if you want to download a copy of this build and play with it. So um, thanks for hanging out with me in this tutorial, and I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, I'm Commander Exorcist. Take care, fly safe, and I'll see you out there.